Hello, I'm David Boyer, Dan Foss Service Training Coordinator. I'm going to discuss how to connect line and load power cabling to your VFD. Please take a moment now to pause the video to read the safety warnings shown here. Failure to follow these warnings could result in death or serious injury. Installing VFD power leads, here's the points we're going to hit on. Preliminary checks, conduit, connecting the drive to the mains incoming power, connecting the drive to the motor, and grounding. Preliminary checks, before you do anything, measure your incoming voltage, just verify that it is what you think it is and it, what, what it needs to be. Compare that to the label on your drive. Uh, compare that also to the nameplate of the motor for dual rated motors. Make sure that it's wired for the voltage that you need it to be wired for. Uh, your power cables, the ampacity has got to meet local code. That's the driving factor on what wire size to use. It does need to have 75 degree C insulation. The maximum cable size is listed in the instruction manual. That's not the size of cable you need to use. It's telling you the biggest cable that will fit in your drive's power terminals. Every drive requires its own short circuit protection. Um, there's a fuse chart also in the instruction manual. It will let you know what fuses you need to use if you need UL approval on this installation. And this is what that looks like. Here's the page out of the manual showing ratings for every drive size, output and input current ratings, and then right here is your uh, maximum cable size. Also from the instruction manual for UL compliance, here's the fuse chart. Here's what it'll look like. Every size drive for, in this example, 200 volt. You need the proper fusing. Here's your drive. Here's what it looks like. Incoming power is going to land at L1, L2, and L3. In every size Danfoss drive, these are going to be numbered terminals 91, 92, and 93. And then this 95 here, there will be a saddle clamp, or for some drives, it's a, it's a bolt where you connect down uh, incoming power ground. Here's your output terminals. They'll always be labeled on any size drive terminals 96, 97, and 98 or UVW. And then there will be a, a provision, Terminal 99 here. Here is a, it's a saddle clamp where you're going to, um, well, actually here, where you're going to put down your motor ground. You need a dedicated wire from the motor back to the drive. And then this goes to the building ground. This is where you ground the drive. For conduits, you've got uh, mains incoming power, you've got your motor cables, and you've got your control wiring. All three of those must be run in three separate metallic conduits. None of these can be run together, and particularly the motor cables. They're very noisy due to the very high frequency switching. They will do terrible things to your control signals. Uh, they can cross talk to motor cables on another drive and put dangerous voltage on a drive that's assumed to be off. So definitely keep your motor cables separate. These. Uh, all these conduits must be at least eight inches apart and then at some point you may be required to cross control wires and power wires so do that at a 90 degree angle for connecting uh, your drive to incoming power again those terminals are l1 l2 and l3 numbered 90 192 and 93 and then your ground goes on 95 and torque these down to the specification in the manual. I'll show you what that looks like. And then for connecting to the motor, again, the motor goes to U, V, and W, numbers 96, 97, and 98. And then connect terminal 99, connect the drive and the motor together uh, directly. The maximum length on your motor leads is 1,000 feet if you're using unscreened cable. Uh, becoming more um, common now is the screened cable that limits your motor lead length to 500 feet. Um, if you are using the screened cable, what you'll want to do at the drive end uh, and at the motor end, strip back the uh, insulated jacket and then secure that shielding down with a saddle clamp or you can use a proper gland connector. We'll see how that looks. So again, the torque as specified in the instruction manual, 
And then here's the tightening torques. It's showing you each drive size. It knows what terminals they are. And then uh, here's what you to torque to in Newton meters. So here's your actual drive. Your incoming power at L1, L2, L3, 91, 92, 93. Ground here, motor, UVW, 96, 97, 98. Ground here, and then ground the whole drive uh, directly to chassis. Uh, here's your uh, gland plate and your cable entry. You knock out um, the size that fits your conduit and, and fasten it down. Um, the shielded cable. This applies to both motor cable and uh, control wiring. When you're using shielded control wiring, here's how you want to do it. Strip back the jacket, clamp the shield down to your chassis using the saddle clamps. Uh, alternatively, you get a good cable gland. You're making the connection right here where it comes through the panel with your cable connection. Don't do this. If you take that shield and, and twist it into a little pigtail, you've lost all of your high frequency performance, which is the whole point of the shielding. Here's how it looks um, all put together. You've got your incoming conduit um, nicely taken care of, separate from your motor conduit. Um, incoming power at L1, L2, L3 with the incoming power grounded. Motor at 96, 97, 98 with a wire coming back from the motor and grounded. And then this would connect to your building ground. So connect your mains uh, power supply to the, to the drive ground. Uh, a dedicated ground wire from your motor at terminal 99. And then connect the drive to ground. It's best to use a braided uh, cable for that, a braided strap, because of uh, the high frequency performance. It's a lower impedance at high frequency, so it really helps channel that noise back to earth. Do not connect one drive ground to another. That's not acceptable. It doesn't give you the connection and performance that you need. Here is an example of braided cable. Uh, it's excellent for um, shielding away high frequency noise to ground. This illustration is going to be in every instruction manual and just as a summary here is PLC controls. We haven't talked about control wiring that's in another segment but it is running in its own conduit. Here's your incoming power with incoming power ground coming through uh, separate conduit cable connection to the drive and then your motor your three motor phases with a ground connection coming from the motor here we are using shielded cable so right where it comes into the panel the uh, jacket has been stripped off and we could maybe uh, zoom in on that where you've got your um, shield clamped down you you want to get try to get uh, 360 degree contact between the shield and your panel and then that they've they've really gone uh, maybe done extra here we've grounded the shield there 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 and again here but that's how it looks that's how you connect power that's it thank you for listening thank you for viewing we hope this information has been helpful Dan Foss Drives can provide additional technical support, parts information, or repair services options by contacting us through one of the following methods. For immediate access to customer service or a technical support expert in North America, call 1-888-DANFOSS or 1-888-326-3677 or contact us through email. For technical support, the email address is drives.ts.na at danfoss.com. For customer service, the email address is drives.cs.na at danfoss.com. For after-sales service, the email address is drives.ts.service.na at danfoss.com. Additional information is also available on our website at www.danfossdrives.com. For contact information in areas outside of North America, please visit our global website at www.danfoss.com. Thanks again.